Want to understand some of the differences you'll see with alternators? Then you're in the right place. In this video, I'm going to cover some of the key differences, specifically alternator mounting styles, brush versus brushless alternators, and amp output. We'll start with mounting styles because that's one of the first decisions you make when selecting an alternator. The alternator is mounted onto the engine usually one of two ways, either with a hinge mount or a pad mount. The hinge mount has two mounting feet and one adjusting ear. You'll generally see the hinge mount used on older vehicles. Hinge mounts can use either a short hinge or a long hinge. If you have an adjustable slide bracket mount, then either size can be used, and you don't need to modify the mount in any way. Now let's talk about the pad mount, which has become increasingly popular in recent years, so much so that almost all over-the-road vehicles use this mounting style. The pad mount is stationary, with four mounting pads bolted directly to the engine block. The mounting bracket can generally accommodate both long mounting pads and short mounting pads. This is important because it means alternators are interchangeable on the application. Moving on, let's talk about brush versus brushless alternators. A brushed alternator uses carbon brushes to help conduct electricity, while a brushless alternator uses two sets of rotors that spin together to generate and transfer the electrical current. The advantage of brushless is that they do not have friction brushes that wear out. Less parts means a longer life expectancy. As a rule of thumb, if you intend to use an alternator less than two years, then brush is a good option. If you need the alternator for a longer time and have lots of coast-to-coast -coast driving, then brushless is better. Finally, let's talk about amp output. In case you need a reminder, amps are how we measure the electrical load of a vehicle. And you need to know that in order to select an alternator. Here's why. You always want an alternator with a higher amp output of at least 20-30% to 30 more than what is needed. A good way to think about it is that for every 60 amps a vehicle needs, you want 78 amps of alternator. Let's translate that into real life examples. For a day cab, that usually means about 130 to 160 amps. And a sleeper cab, which has an even higher electrical load, you may need between 160 to 200 plus amps. Just remember, an alternator should provide greater output than the vehicle requires. And it's usually okay to go up in output, but not down. That's it. Those are the main differences of alternators. If you're curious about starter motors, I can help there too. Check out our videos, one on the basics of a starter and another on the differences in starter design you should be aware of.